Greetings on this Thursday in the second week of Easter, April the 23rd, 2020. It's good to be with you again. And uh, as we gather today, I want to uh, utilize what would be happening amongst the uh, women of the congregation who are blessed to be part of the Women's Bible Study that meets on Thursdays. They have been working through the Gospel according to St. Luke. They started this uh, well, nearly two years ago, in anticipation of uh, starting a year C of the lectionary series, where they would have been hearing from the Gospel according to St. Luke uh, every week as part of our Gospel readings uh, appointed for that given Sunday. And that was a way for us to uh, deepen our understanding and appreciation for what was going on there. Uh, of course, it takes more than just that year to get through it, and so we're still plugging away through it. Um, and uh, I thought it would be especially helpful to take a look at uh, something that is specific to Luke's account of the gospel, and especially with the season that we're currently in, and that is Luke chapter 23, verse 56b. Now, this is at the very end of the Passion account. Christ has been laid in the tomb, and then this is unique to Luke, where he says, on the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Now, that's implicit in the other accounts of the gospel because there is a rush on Good Friday um, to ensure that Jesus had actually died. That is a rush by the authorities because the, the Sabbath was coming uh, in a biblical mindset. The day begins at sundown. That's because of Genesis 1, where you hear there was evening, there was morning, the first day, the second day, etc. And so the day in the biblical mindset begins at sundown. So on Good Friday, as Jesus is crucified, uh, the authorities wanted to make sure that Christ was truly dead before sundown, before the Sabbath arrived, because they couldn't be handling these affairs once the Sabbath arrived, uh, especially because that was a high Sabbath. It was the Passover Sabbath. So uh, they ensured that that had happened. Uh, the, the women quickly uh, attend Joseph of Arimathea as he uh, takes the body of Jesus, sets him in the tomb, and uh, then they had prepared spices and ointments for the body of Jesus. That was standard practice of the day, uh, but they weren't able to use those because there wasn't sufficient time. Uh, they would use them, uh, go to the tomb on uh, Easter morning in anticipation of using them, but even then they weren't able to because Christ had risen from the dead. So on the Sabbath, what do they do? They rest because that is in accord with the commandment uh, given by God. Now, it's also a good reminder, and this is the bigger point, is that what was Christ doing on that Saturday? He was resting in the tomb. You can see this as Christ, again, fulfilling the entire will and law of God on our behalf. That he labors all the way through the sixth day, that is Friday, and then on the seventh day, the Sabbath, he rests. You can even see this as a fulfillment of what you get at the uh, end of the first account of creation. This is early on in Genesis chapter 2, where it mentions how the Lord completed his work in six days, and because he has uh, completed his work, on the seventh day he rests. And you can see that Christ is doing the same thing. He has completed all things necessary for our salvation. He's completed what he's been called to do by his Father as of Friday. So on the Sabbath, he rests according to the commandment. Now, that's good news for us for many reasons. Number one is this, that he has fulfilled everything on our behalf. The second one is... Here is where your rest is found. Your rest is found in Christ, who is your rest, and who has even fulfilled the Sabbath for you. Now, the early church understood this, and so the early church said, all right, Christ has fulfilled the Sabbath for us. Therefore, we are free to choose whatever day we would like to be our holy day. And so the early church chose Sunday as the day that they would set aside for gathering together, because that's the day of the resurrection. Every Sunday is a a celebration of Christ's resurrection from the dead. Uh, you can even see this in the life and ministry of Christ with the things that he himself was doing on the Sabbath, where he would point out that the Sabbath was made for man for our benefit and not that we were made for the Sabbath as if it was to be another uh, burden upon us, but rather it is to be rest. But of course, 
True rest is only found in Christ himself. He gives you rest from a burdened conscience because he has fulfilled all things for you, given you forgiveness. He's also given you true rest because you are at peace with your heavenly father. Now, this is great news for us, obviously. And it's also a good reminder to us about uh, the rest that he also gives us, even when our labors here on earth are done, is that we then rest in the tomb. So we have our, if you will, six days of labor, our earthly life that he gives us to accomplish what he's given us to do. And then we rest in our tombs, just as Christ rested in his tomb, awaiting the day of the resurrection. Now, Christ rose on the third day. We're awaiting the day when he comes again for us, and we are brought forth from the tomb just as him. Now, that's good news. Notice all the good news that comes out of what Christ has done for you. He, make, he gives you confidence that he has done all things on your behalf. He gives you rest in this life because your conscience is not burdened. He gives you rest even when this earthly life comes to an end as you await the resurrection. And fourth, he gives you the certainty that just as he rose from the dead, you too will rise. So rejoice this day, even in the midst of whatever burdens are upon you, that in Christ you have true rest, rest that lasts now, and into uh, the life to come, rest from the burden of a guilty conscience with certainty in what Christ has done for you. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, in this life in which we are burdened by so many worries and difficulties and even a burdened conscience, we give you thanks and praise that you deliver to us rest. Give us confidence that our consciences are not burdened, but rather are set free by Christ our Savior. Give us also confidence in the rest that he has won for us, that as we anticipate the resurrection on the last day, that we would have confidence that we will come forth from the grave as he did, perfected, imperishable, incorruptible, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.